Azure Arc enabled servers and machine configurations. We talked about it in the past, but there are new things. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Leo is here with another Jumps to Lightning episode. I'm excited to have Jody here with me to talk to me about all the new things that are coming with machine configurations with Arc enabled servers. Jody, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks, Leo, for having me. Yeah, I, you know, you and I have been talking for a while. We wanted to have this episode of Jumps to Lightning, and I was waiting for that. Jody, today you're here to talk to me about all things machine configuration. But before we do that, who you are, what is it that you do? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Jody Boone, and I'm the PM on the Machine Configuration Service, um, and I'm based in Redmond, Washington. Jody, machine configuration. First of all, you know it's a question that I like to ask all my audience when, uh, or sorry, all my guests when you know when they're coming to the show, especially the product managers. And I wanted to ask you, what's the motivation here around machine configurations and and, and Arc enabled servers? Yeah, that's a great question. So. You know, when we think about machine configuration, what we're really trying to do is make it easier for people to configure their guest operating systems from mm -hmm. the Azure control plane. You know, and this is something that we've seen, especially for customers, you know, managing hybrid, uh, hybrid server states, on-prem servers, servers in mm -hmm. the cloud, servers at the edge. You know, we have a really diverse resource landscape and they want kind of a consistent way to manage their guest operating systems in a way that's you know, required, like uh, <laughs> declarative, item potent, and reliable. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of the benefit of using machine config for um, kind of for that for that job to be done for a lot of folks. Yeah, I always thought of machine config as uh, kind of you know policy and governance on steroids. Yeah. Uh, would that be a fair a fair statement? No, I think that's a great statement. And, you know, I'm excited to show you kind of some of the stuff that we have in our demo today, too. And, you know, really just showing the benefit of being able to kind of couple machine configuration with Azure policy as well. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, when we're talking about uh, wanting to configure your operating system settings at scale, usually this is for a pretty large um, number of servers. We're talking about like at scale management and governance. And so that's where Azure policy really brings in a ton of value into the space, too. So, Jody, I was excited when you told me that today you want to show some some Linux stuff because you know I'm a Linux kind of guy. Uh, even though I I know my ways around Windows, but I you know I started with Linux. So, talk to me about all these new cool things that you guys are working on. Yeah, definitely. So, one of the things that I really like to talk about with machine configuration too is that machine config actually represents the first generally available platform to deploy mm -hmm. DSC at scale for Linux. Mm -hmm. So we haven't really gotten there all the way previously um, in previous implementations. And so that's where we're really excited to kind of continue to um, make it easier for Linux customers to use mm -hmm. machine config as well as PowerShell um, and DSC, which is desired state configuration for those of you who haven't heard of it before. So Linux is really our kind of first stab of lowering the barrier to entry to authoring your own custom configurations to be mm -hmm. deployed at scale like using machine configuration and policy. So if some of you have used kind of uh, PS desired state configuration before, um, what that really is, is a library of built-in resources that you can mm -hmm. then use um, kind of in parts to assemble your own custom configuration documents. Um, because, you know, when we talk about authoring custom configurations, you can author the whole thing yourself. You know, you can build your own DSC resources. You yeah. can deploy those at scale using custom configurations. But one of the best parts about DSC is like the amazing community that surrounded it. Um, and so PS Desired State Configuration is a really great um, example of a lot of really fantastic, you know, community contributions as well. But mm -hmm. there was that content gap on the Linux side too. Today, we don't have a lot of built-in DSC resources for Linux. Yeah. So that's why we were really excited to, you know, open source and release the repository for people to, you know, kind of come in, take what they need from this in order to go build those custom configurations in their own environments, but then also eventually get to a state where this can kind of be um, a community effort. Yeah, and this is where the and this is where the NX tools uh, piece comes in, which you're going to show me today. And you know, Jody, one 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 observation here is that DSC and desired state configuration, in the context of Azure, in the context of you know yeah. just kind of how people are looking at it, it was always in the conversation around Windows and and PowerShell. Yeah. You know, that was. 
that was the bread and butter. When we say DSC, it was also like automation accounts and custom scripts and, you know, what's the comparison there? It was always around Windows. So I'm excited to see that the direction that the team is taking in the context of, okay, let's make, let's make this a bit more Linux friendly and start incorporating some of these concepts. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And, you know, we've also included our full distro support here. I think actually we also support Ubuntu 22.04 as well. So that's uh, not updated even in the graphic, but, you mm -hmm. know, I think we'll get to kind of NX tools too. And, you know, if there's something that you see here, like a distro that we don't support that you're using, let us know in the comments, open an issue, et cetera. Like we're just kind of looking for ways to. Yeah. Everything is moving fast, right? We can't just keep up with, with the decks, you know? I know, uh, exactly. So, My PowerPoint no, slides no, 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 don't no, no, no. <laughs> I know that you have a banger of a demo to show me today. So what is that all about? Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to head over into Visual Studio Code. And what I wanted to do today is just kind of walk you through some of the authoring tooling that we have for you to create your own custom configurations that you can then bring into Azure. Um, and I wanted to use some of the DSC resources from NX Tools. Mm -hmm. So we'll quickly go over some of the modules that we're going to use in the demo. So the first one is the guest configuration module. Yep. So if we just, you know, let's just check out what's kind of going on under the hood here. We have five different uh, functions that you're able to use. So the first one is the uh, get guest configuration package compliance status. So, mm -hmm. you know, this allows you to actually test locally how your package is working ahead of deploying it at cloud scale. We nice. want to make it easy for you to like kind of fail fast and see what's working locally and what doesn't. Yeah. The second one here is the new guest configuration package. And this is actually going to be the first step that you take in kind of your authoring journey. Um, basically what this does is it packages your compiled configuration document along mm -hmm. with a little bit more metadata that um, our agent requires to kind of deploy this at scale. Um, and actually when we're talking about this in the context of Arc enabled servers, one of the really great things um, about the connected machine agent is that it kind of helps you bring all of the goodness to your servers without actually having to do anything additional. So when you arc enable your server, you actually have all the prerequisites to use this already. So you don't need to go in and download another extension or anything. Gotcha. Um, the third one here is the new guest configuration policy commandlet. And we're really excited about this one too, because, you know, in terms of being able to go from like code to cloud, I guess, mm -hmm. you have to author your configuration document, author your package. If we had you like author your policy too, that's just one more step. So this commandlet actually generates the Azure policy definition that you can then deploy to your resources too. So we'll take a little bit of a look at um, mm -hmm. kind of how that works too. Uh, the protect guest configuration package commandlet allows you to assign that configuration package um, ahead of uploading it to your publicly accessible storage account. Um, and then the start guest configuration package remediation is sort of in the same light as the um, get the package compliance status. And it lets mm -hmm. you just try out what that set operation looks like locally. Um, so it doesn't just see if the resource is compliant or not, it will actually like execute a local, um, a local configuration action. So I like the fact that like, so what I'm observing here are a couple of things. One, you guys really took the extra step to reduce the friction in terms of developing um, against, um, against, you know, just kind of the NX tools and DSC and the models and all that. So that's, so that's great. But the second thing that I'm observing kind of relates to what I said before, which is uh, policy and governance on steroids. Because of that, you know, policy integration, the remediation, the, you know, you showed me like all these models here and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's everything really that you need in order to create this bundle, this package that will go, you'll be able to integrate with Azure policy eventually and, you know, get this integration going in towards like a governance motion, correct? Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, we know that, you know, people want to be, you want to make sure that you're authoring the correct thing. When you're yeah. talking about, you know, at scale configuration of your guest operating system, we want to make sure that it's declarative and, you know, repeatable. So yeah. if any changes are made, we want to make sure those are tested before they're deployed. But then at the end of the day, once something is, you know, tried, true and tested, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to actually get the value of an at scale deployment too. So yeah, yeah you hit the nail on the head. I like this notion of inner loop for for guest config. You know, it it's not something that it's not something that I guess people that's been in the game for long enough. When we were doing, um, I guess when Windows admin were used to do like 
stuff like GPO and, and, and all of that, it was a bit harder to, and even in Azure, right? It was hard to test those things in, a, in an inner loop fashion. You had to go develop the thing, deploy that against some sort of test resources, and then, you know, pray to the, you know, to the DLL gods that this will work. Um, so, yeah. Yes. All right. Exactly. Cool. So, you know, we feel your pain and we're trying to help. <laughs> so, awesome. Awesome. so let's just take a look kind of at what it'll look like when we want to actually use the NX tools, uh, NX tools module. Mm -hmm. So if we head over into the PS uh, config file, what we can see is that we first need to, you know, import the module here. And then from there, we want to make sure that, uh, well, here, let's just talk about what we're going to do first. So this mm -hmm. configuration is going to use the NX file resource, which will, you know, ensure that a file is present. If it's not, it'll create that file. So, you know, let's say that this is um, like a networking config file or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it was deleted off like a local instance by mistake. You know, yeah. our agent runs scans on the hour. Um, and so you can be in, like reassured that within that hour, that file will again, you know, be created. Um, yeah. And you can also verify the contents of that file as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we look at it for this example, we're just going to do kind of a, a simpler example, and we're going to talk about how Jumpstart is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I, and I just want to say to the viewers, I didn't tell you to put this. This is this is all you. You know, just a full disclaimer. <laughs> I know. I knew the audience, so yeah. <laughs> so all right. What we're doing is creating a configuration called Jumpstart Config, mm -hmm. and then we're going to create our local host.moth file. Um, using the jumpstart config path. So this is actually a, um, a class-based configuration document. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go ahead and run this. So what is happening now? One, you know, once you you uh, you hit the compile there or you know just kind of run in those commands, what's what's happening in the background? Yeah, so what's happening in the background is this configuration is actually um, it's compiling. So at this point, if there was anything wrong with, you know, your reference to that DSC resource, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, it required like a, a strong type or something like that, um, this again mm -hmm. would allow you to kind of fail fast ahead of, you know, putting it into your configuration package to deploy yeah. it. Okay. And then ultimately the output here is this localhost.moth file. So this is kind of the metadata that our service uses to make sure that, you know, all of the um, prerequisites are there. It has your file mm -hmm. contents. Um, as well as some other kind of information that will be required to run this. Got it. Cool. So now you have your compiled configuration document. You know, how do we actually go from that to the package that will eventually be your Azure policy? So we're going to go ahead and run the new guest configuration package commandlet. And so what that does is basically package your compiled configuration document along with all of the dependent resources. So mm. that NX file resource will be like captured in the package as well. Um, so that, you know, all of your dependencies are kind of nicely kept, um, nicely kept in the same location. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, save in a variable the demo resource group that I want this policy to end up in eventually. And I'm going to create a new storage account actually to upload this package to. So I'm going to go mm -hmm. ahead and create a new storage account as well. And eventually what we're going to do is upload this package that we just created into a container in blob storage. And today, you need to um, give our agent sort of the minimum permissions uh, in order to, to have access to your configuration content, um, which is just read-only. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and get some other metadata that we need to actually complete uh -huh. that operation. Oh, this command sometimes takes a while. So we'll just kind of look at the next couple of commands as well. So, we're going to grab the key for my storage account as well as the context. So kind of the metadata of the storage account that's required yep. um, to complete this operation, which is really what we're interested in. So we're going to be uploading that uh, zip file. That's our configuration package to the storage account that we just went ahead and created. Um, so it. that's the reference that will end up giving our Azure policy definition so that, um, you know, we'll be able to continuously monitor that at the one hour interval. Uh, reporting compliance back to the Azure policy definition. So we can see that the storage account was successfully created. And now we'll go ahead and upload that content package as well. So now what we're going to do is save a variable called our kind of content URI. And what that's going to represent is the location in blob storage where that config package is 
um, is located, mm -hmm. as well as a custom SAS token um, that you can set to expire kind of at any interval that you're comfortable with. Um, yep. So we'll just go ahead and save that. And then ultimately, now we're going to go ahead and create the policy definition. So again, Lear did not tell me to make this policy name, but what we're going to do is create a new GUID, um, which will represent the uh, unique identifier for the policy definition as well. Okay. And then we're just going to go ahead and run this commandlet, which will create a new Azure policy um, that has the same uh, configuration package that we just created. So we'll be creating an NX file object or a file object that will have the file contents jumpstart is awesome. Yep. And you can see here that you set the mode as apply and monitor. So let's just talk about that for a second. So mm -hmm. you can use the service today in three different modes. The first is audit only. So that audits the state of the machine against the desired state that's specified in your mm -hmm. config, but we won't go ahead mm -hmm. and make any changes. The second is apply and monitor. So we'll apply that configuration once, but let's say it drifts out of compliance for some reason. Um, we won't go ahead and like take any other action to bring it back into compliance. Mm -hmm. And the third is apply and autocorrect. So that's that kind of mode where we are constantly uh, correcting for any configuration drift at that one hour interval as well. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and run this. So while this is happening, Jody, I have a question. When I'm creating, uh, when I'm creating a new policy definition, which is what you're doing right now, um, in terms of, I'm, I'm kind of curious about this mode, apply and monitor, right? A user can always create some sort of a rule or yeah. an alert to notify them if if something goes out of compliance, correct? Absolutely. So ultimately, when we create this Azure policy, it's going to be under the deploy if not exist effect. So there are a lot of really great kind of uh, ways you can get alerted about non-compliance, including like an event grid notification. Um, people sometimes set up Azure functions to track the compliance status. Um, but then, you know, in the Azure portal, which we'll go ahead and see after this, um, you can go ahead and create a remediation task as well if that policy drifts um, out of compliance too. Yeah. So we're just yeah. kind of like giving the power back to the IT admins in that case as well. So we're going to go ahead and create this new Azure policy definition. And then after that, we've created a new policy. So we'll head over to the portal to kind of see what it looks like to uh, kind of deploy this at scale. Um, you can also do it just through, again, PowerShell commandlets as well. But um, I also want to kind of show you some of the new built-in policies that we've published as well, because I think that people will be excited about them. Great. So you can see that the Jumpstart demo policy was successfully created. So here, oh, before we head into the portal, we're just going to quickly kind of talk about NX Tools. Um, you know, this is a community effort. Um, and so if you try it out and are interested, feel free to open an issue. Um, we've actively kind of been pushing out PRs based on issues that were opened, and we just released the NX script resource as well. So just a little bit of a plug there. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, if we head into the policy portal now, what you can do is see a list of the built-in Azure policy definitions as well that our team kind of supports and maintains. And you'll notice that these are kind of aligned to some of the like operational and security best practices that you might be interested in. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, disabling local user authentication, um, configuring your uh, secure communication protocols, kind of all of that as well. But let's see if we can just see that jumpstart policy we just created. Awesome. So here's the jumpstart demo policy that we just made. So then to mm -hmm. kind of apply that at scale, you'd be able to just kind of go through the create flow um, in policy as well. So monitor the compliance of Azure policies again when applied to Arc enabled servers. I do also just want to point out that we have um, a custom UX for you to actually see exactly what's going on kind of in your guest operating system within the Arc enabled server uh, portal. So if you go under operations to machine configuration as well, you can kind of see all of the different configurations that are currently monitoring your guest operating system. So when you click into this, for example, you can see kind of a brief compliance message that outlines either the reason for compliance or non-compliance as well. So if we click into this policy uh, for the Linux log analytics agent being installed or not, you know, you can see that this server is compliant and it's because the log analytics application is installed. Um, and for other built-in policies, including, you know, TLS and being able to set your secure communication protocol, it will tell yeah. you, you know, what, um, like what version of TLS or SSL you have enabled. 
I like the uh, I like the fact that you know with machine config everything is very uh, you know it's it's custom oriented, but it's also um, speak the language of Azure policy in a sense. You know if that if that makes sense, um, because for for folks that are looking at Azure policy for the first time, it can be somewhat overwhelming because there's a lot of things, right? Um, but I think that with machine config, because of the fact that the language is a bit easier and it's all declarative and all that, um, and I was honestly I was positively surprised by the fact that you know with NX tools and you know the the metadata the schema feels very natural, you know, from coming from that from that space. But yeah, I mean, it seems very very seamless, very frictionless. Yeah, that's our hope. And you know, again, if you have any issues, kind of with getting started with NX tools or, you know, if anybody kind of watching this has suggestions or resources that are, are you know, a must have or a distro that we don't support, you know, we really encourage you to kind of open that issue yeah. um, and, and and kind of get involved too. Yeah. And obviously we're gonna link to uh, to the repo in the description down below. Uh, so Jody, last question that I have for you, how do yeah. people directly get started with this? That's a great question. And, you know, we were able to work with your fantastic team to publish a couple of new guides to the Azure Arc Jumpstart page. So everything yeah. that you saw in my demo today, all of those commands are pretty nicely laid out in the kind of creating a custom configuration for Linux, uh, Linux startup guide. And you can see, you know, really front to back what the base requirements are for configuration authoring. You can see, mm -hmm. you know, code and real life examples for what it means to use the module in your environment. And, you know, you're right. Like, I feel like generally when I've talked to people about this, they've been pleasantly surprised at, you know, it seems like there's kind of a big barrier to entry. You're authoring DSC, but at the end of the day, you're working with key value pairs to be able to have, you know, a pretty sophisticated configuration management system at scale through policy. So yeah, we're really hoping that this can help people sort of get started and, and go from there. Yeah, bridging uh, bridging the worlds of Windows, Azure, and and Linux. I love it. So, Jody, I wanted to say uh, thank you for coming yeah. uh, to the show. Um, um, I guess one last last question that I have for you: what what the future holds for uh, for machine config? What are the areas that you guys are looking at and investing on? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, we really closely partner with the PowerShell team, and there's a lot of really exciting things going on kind of in the DSC as a platform space, including mm -hmm. being able to author configurations in other languages outside of PowerShell, um, you know, including Bash and Python, you know, revisiting some of the schemas that we've known for a long time into mm -hmm. more modern representations, including like JSON and YAML. And then, you know, over time, we do expect to, um, you know, continue to make it easier for people to deploy machine config using policy as well, because, you know, it's a great platform with, you know, yeah. a ton of really like rich capabilities and features. Um, so, you know, just make it as easy as possible for people to get started and then, you know, eventually like apply at scale. Loving it. Jody, thank you so much for uh, for coming to the show and for the Jumpstart viewers. Thank you so much for your support thus far. I mean, you stay thus far. So just hit the subscribe, hit the like while you're there. Um, and let us know in the comments if this is something that you care about, any questions, any features that you want to ask Jody and the team. Uh, to develop. I would love to see those engagements coming and we're going to see you in the next one. Bye everyone.